Checkout Tracking by the NPD Group brings you a receipt collecting system that gathers data anonymously through technology we created, providing your businesses with answers. Awesome, thank you. Uh, I'll just step up here really fast. So uh, I'm Ian Safferman. I'm general manager of the Tune Marketing Console. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Tune does mobile marketing tools. So we have attribution analytics, app store analytics, uh, we have a cross promo solution, and we just acquired another company, Artisan, to help us on the retention side of the world. Uh, but that's, that's sort of all I'll say about us. You can come talk to us at our booth anytime. Really what I want to do is, is intro Jefferson here. Uh, Jefferson's going to be giving a, a really, I think, a, a very cool talk on Japan and how you can sort of, you know, wh what Japan is really like and how different it actually is. It's super exciting to me personally for a variety of reasons. One, Japan is number one on my list of countries to visit. I've never actually been. Uh, number two is he has a slide in here. I'm going to uh, foreshadow a slide in here of Darwin and uh, for the for the folks that that know me, I'm obsessed with my dog and my dog's name is Darwin. So we're going to go with that. Um, so anyways, uh, without further ado, let's bring up Jefferson. Thanks. Thanks, Ian. Yeah, the whole uh, lecture was motivated by the Ian's dog. So <laughs> that's what we're going to be talking about today. So first question I have is like, how many of you are actually from Japan? All right, there's, okay, good. So in case I offend you today, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's jump into the, the rest. Uh, yeah, so the Galapagos of Games, I mean, if you know anything about Galapagos and Darwin, you probably know where this is leading, but uh, this lecture is uh, mainly inspired by me. I also had Japan in my top list of places to visit for a long time, and then I actually did go for the first time this year. Uh, so, you know, whenever I had all these images about what Japan would be, and then, of course, like I was able to actually go there and see what was real and what was not real. Uh, but I was also, uh, you know, I, I guess the reason why this is pretty important to me is like I grew up in Brazil. Uh, by the way, I, I got to give this warning. So, yeah, if you think my accent is a little weird, that's why. I also lived in uh, four different countries in the last 10 years. So, like, my accent is all over the place. So, if you don't understand me, Raise your hand and I'll try to speak again. If I speak too fast, which is what I do all the time, like if you can also raise your hand if you can't understand, just a couple of, couple of disclaimers. Uh, yeah, so I grew up in Brazil, which is like very big uh, Japanese influence. We have like a very large Japanese uh, community in Sao Paulo and we also have, uh, I grew up watching a lot of Japanese stuff on TV, right? So it's, uh, it was always like a dear thing to me, but then I also had the opportunity to go there as a, like an employee of a company, right? So I can actually see both sides, not, not just the consumer side, but also the, the uh, company side, right? So this is, uh, we had like a big all hands in Yokohama near Tokyo, and uh, this is what this meeting is about. And you know, I had like my name on a chair, it was great. So like, I, I really don't care, like people know me, know that I really don't care about titles or anything like that, but I have to say this, if you wanna have a big title, do it for a Japanese company, it's great. I really recommend it. Uh, so the love affair with uh, Japan, like it's not just uh, in Brazil, right? I think in the US, like uh, there's also like on, and in the West in general, there's a big influence from Japanese uh, through video games, right? Like in the beginning, like a lot of the games were uh, Japanese uh, and that kind of stayed true for a long time uh, in the console history uh, to the point where if you try to make any sort of assessment of how many of the well-known video game characters exist, like uh, quite a lot of these are actually from Japan. Like you would, so y if you think just from a cultural point of view, there's a big influence, right? Uh, another like big example, like we all wanted to be like Japan, right? At some point, like if you were, if you were working on video games, you, you always had that kind of influence. Uh, the, I don't know how many people know this, but the, when they were making Crash Bandicoot, the prototype was called Sonic's ass because their goal was to make like a back camera version of Sonic. Uh, so again, it's all, it's all like very telling, like where the inspiration came from, right? But then something happened, which is like you know, in the West we really got uh, a little bit obsessed with fidelity and like realism, and like you know, let's go and you know, do all these uh, very realistic themes. And I think that's when we started like uh, branching from Japan, uh, and you know, that's the, I guess the point of uh, where Galapagos kind of meets the, the the idea, right? So Japan went and evolved in this completely separate way. I don't know if you know about this game, but it's like a game where you play birds and you try to make them, uh, it's kind of like a relationship, like a sort of bird-themed 
game. I don't know how to explain. Like, but it, so this is the kind of stuff that you know that eventually like became super popular over there. And then, but you know, we kind of don't understand because we kind of branched at that stage. And this kind of represented, like, if you look at the mobile market today, uh, Japan actually moved into mobile. I think probably took a little long because they were they had such a big penetration of the good feature phones uh, so it took a while for them to get into the smartphone industry but like now that they're there they actually move faster than uh us right like a lot more people play games on mobile there than they the, do console already I, as a company we make more money for mobile games than for uh, console games these days in japan uh, so you can see that it's you know the even though in the west there's a lot of like similarities uh, in japan they tend to be a little bit more different i think if you go try to look at a, a couple of the trends here so no casino apps uh, which I guess is more like a US-ish sort of thing, but you know they, they are popular in some other places in the West as well. Uh, people from overseas, like everybody tries, and you know you can translate the game, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to appeal to the guys there, right? So it's like pretty hard to break through. Uh, you see Clash of Clans on the top of pretty much every country, maybe number two or three over there, but like in, in Japan, it's not. Uh, Console IP is very popular, so that's not necessarily the case over here, right? Like, just because something used to be popular on another format doesn't mean it translates well into mobile in, uh, in the West in general, but in Japan it does. And, you know, Japan also has this, um, obviously, love affair with, like, manga and anime and, and this kind of IP, and they're very represented on the, on the charts over there, too. Right, so like I said, I think you know the the kind of point for this is like you know if if looking at Galapagos made Darwin realize how things were like our kind of goal is to do the same, looking at Japan and say like okay, what kind of things can we learn from this? It's going to help us figure out what's going to come next in the evolution of games. So the first thing to know about Japan, uh, if you haven't been, or I guess you probably would know, but like the, the thing that enables a lot of the things I'm going to talk about here is the fact that it's like hyper dense. So it's a pretty small geographical area, but uh, I mean, this is a, the view from uh, the city hall in Tokyo. I, I you can't see where it ends. Like it's basically like city, 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 right? So, and what this enables is public transport because it can actually um, leave a lot of people live very far from where they work. You know, they commute an hour, an hour and a half, take a train, and and get there because it's possible. And you know, the the roads are actually not uh, the best way to do things. Um, and then, as you can see, if you're going to spend one hour, or hour and a half on a train, each leg, uh, I mean, it's actually a pretty empty train. Usually, the trains are not this empty, but uh, <laughs> at least uh, near Tokyo. But uh, the what what are you going to do if you have one hour to kill? Or oh, you have this thing in your hand, right? Uh, and then that's kind of also displayed by the fact, you know, if you look at like tablet penetration in Japan, it's it's way lower than compared to here, because uh, it just just people have way more phones, right? Uh, it also enabled things like this. So I was walking there and got into like a, on the subway and the JR line was like one of the most busy in Tokyo. And then like the whole train was taken by Clash of Clans, like the whole train. And it has also like some moving, I, I didn't uh, put it here, but there's like some screens which were like looping a little trailer from the game, right? So uh, because it's so dense, this is actually worth doing, right? It's like you can, you, there's so many people, like millions of people take that train every day, so it's actually probably a good deal. Uh, and by the way, this is not cheap, like take the train. It's not like because, oh, trains are cheap, so they do it. No, it's actually a premium placement. They fight with other companies who are also trying to reach a bunch of consumers. But uh, I mean, if you're talking about, uh, I guess everybody talks about how acquisition costs are going high, like this, depending on your game and you know your audience, this might actually be worth doing. Uh, and I guess like another example, like it's not necessarily from uh, Japan, but how this could be useful. Like last time I was in London, uh, I was like the 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 car was in the train, like on the subway. There was maybe I don't know five people playing games. Three of them were playing Candy Crush. So I, I think if you're a king, like you might think that it's a good deal for you to go and uh, advertise inside like uh, the London uh, subway. All right. The other thing uh, I was noticing, like over there, so I was walking in Shinjuku, and um, it's like one of the very uh, light neighborhoods and then uh, light as in lots of light sources everywhere uh, so I was walking around and then I keep listening to this music I was like where's this music coming from and then I look it's like a truck that goes like it's going on the road and it's actually advertising that um, I still don't know if it's a girls band a boys band I don't know some sort of androgynous band like there, there was a they were playing this very loud music and that's kind of how like they were advertising that album like there's an album or coming out or and, and it's basically like a track blaring the music on the street with like the pictures on their side and i was like oh this is interesting and then of course i asked like the the guys in the office like hey do they do this for games and of course they do uh, for mobile games as well so if you uh this is a thing they do and it's 
powerful. Uh, they wouldn't do it if it didn't work. So they, they, they do a bunch of this over there. It's another way that I don't think we necessarily think that we could uh, advertise. I mean, if you went to Vegas, you probably had a little bit of a glimpse of what this is like, because Vegas also has this kind of trucks going around. Uh, and you know, that kind of works because again, the strip is dense, so you, they, they just do it there, but like the, you, can, you can probably think of other ways to use this uh, yourself. Uh, the other thing they do in Japan is pretty popular, uh, the convenience store, 7-Elevens uh, are like everywhere, so they, they have this vast network of those things. So it's very common for the, the companies to do deals with uh, those companies, right? So if you buy stuff on 7-Eleven, then you go into this lottery that you can win uh, life-sized character. So it is actually actual dimensions of uh, the character. So you know you can actually go big with your marketing campaign. Uh, of course, you're probably not going to give one of these to everybody, but you can do like a uh, you know giveaway or, or something like that and get people really excited about uh, what you're doing. Um, arcade is still like pretty popular in Japan. So when I was there, I did see like a Candy Crush or arcade machine, and I'm pretty sure King did not do it, but they were, I guess, savvy enough to realize that uh, if you have fans there, you might do this right. And so similarly, if you know a, a place where people play those games, you might want to do that too. You might not want to develop it yourself, but you can maybe you can find a partner uh, that uh, can do it for you. Uh, this other thing is a station, like it's a station where it's in a game shop. Or I guess like an electronic shop, so they sell a lot of stuff in there. But you know, the, uh, this is on the game floor of, the, of that shop, and then in Akihabara, and then uh, you have uh, these machines which you buy these cars, physical cars, and then you lay them off in those slots in there, and then you play the game, right? So they kind of recognize the cards you have, and then you're playing, and you kind of the cards get experience and get better, and then uh, you know if you run out, of, out of, yeah, yeah, I don't have the right card right now. Where can I buy more? Oh, it's just over here. This is great, right? So it's pretty convenient. Uh, they kind of connect the the place where you can kind of play with the place where you buy uh, stuff. Uh, and again, this is a mostly a card type game, which uh, you know a lot of people are developing these days. Uh, this is just like a, to tell a little bit how media uh, disseminates in Japan. So, like as you guys know, they have a lot of like anime and those things, and they keep there's always more. Uh, a lot of them start in this kind of magazine, so there's a, there's a Shonen Jump, uh, the weekly edition, so they have a, every week they have a bunch of stories in there, they're like, you know, maybe a few pages each, uh, so it's like the, the, that week's chapter, and the next week there's the, the next chapter. So pretty much every IP, every like anime IP you know started in one of these magazines, so it starts like a small story and then becomes a, maybe gets a few more pages next month, and then and then eventually moves it to its own magazine, and then eventually moves to a, like you know an anime format. So it it it, it kind of grows from there. So these are things that um, if you, you you could potentially see ways to disseminate IP. Like if you want to like make your own IP, why don't you start doing something similar and kind of see what the audience likes? This is basically like a way to kind of soft launch IP. Like they put it out there, people read it, they extend it. If not, they kind of kill it. So it's it's pretty much what it is, like a lab to try and figure out what, what people are going to want. Uh, it's a big market, right? Like if you move specifically into mobile, like uh, this light's a little old, it's probably a little bit uh, bigger the difference even now. So in mobile specifically, they do a lot of different things, which I guess some people are starting to bring here, like they do pre-registration for the game. So like when a game is releasing, before the game is released, you can register to get like the link to get the game when the game is out. Uh, this is particularly useful if you have some community or if you have some IP that you know people are going to want. Obviously, if you have a completely new game and nobody knows you, like pre-registering is probably not going to be super useful, but uh, this could be, depending on what uh, setup you have, this could, this could be an uh, interesting way to do things. Uh, marketing assets, uh, it's actually a pretty uh, interesting story, uh, at least from my point of view. So I used to work for Bioware. So when I saw I was in the store and I saw this Dragon Age Inquisition thing, and I said, okay, let me check it out, like what, how they are marketing the game. Anyway, you know, if you look at an American trailer for this game, it's basically like swords, wizards, fireballs, explosions. Uh, when I went to see the, the Japanese trailer, it was basically like people playing through the menus because they only, like, I guess most people like to play the turn-based tactic part of it. So it, like, it's like menu, 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 click, boom, pause, and then menu, 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 boom, pause. And I'm like, what? Is this like in a store and they're actually selling? But you know, that's, that's how, like, how, the, how uh, you gotta understand your audience, right? So I guess like if you try to take the, the the learning from this, like it's pretty. You really gotta understand who you're selling this thing to, because you, you can't just assume that whatever you do is gonna work for everyone. 
Uh, the other thing they do is they have, you know, kind of like the Facebook equivalent, if you think like from the social game time, like Line is the most popular one right now. Uh, they do all the things that uh, you're used of hearing that people do with Facebook, so it's actually pretty similar. Uh, the other thing that they really like in Japan is I went to this um, Himeji castle, which is like one of the most like popular, uh, I guess, famous castles in Japan. And of course, I met the mascot of the castle there. Uh, you know, so they, they do a lot of this stuff. So you, you know, it's you, but it, again, this stuff, stuff you might take and want to do it yourself, right? Or necessarily, if you if you go into Japan, you might understand that they like this kind of stuff. Uh, we as a company, we are like about entertainment, not just games. So you know, we actually changed our name recently. Um, one of the many ch name changes we had, a lot of people still call us like Nankon Bandai, but we changed the order. I guess most people didn't realize, and now we, we have the entertainment instead of games. And part of the reason is because we're everywhere. So like if you go to Japan in particular, like you see we have we're, we're toys, magazines, movies. And this is something that, you know, the Angry Birds guys like had, um, when they released, they went super deeply into kind of licensing and stuff. Like uh, a lot of people like give them a flag for it, but like, it's actually a pretty good move for them. I like, paid off, like they actually build their brand to, to the point where it's actually pretty popular. And I think the physical world can help you if you have uh, something that works. Uh, anyway, you can do this kind of things. I mean, maybe you don't necessarily have uh, the budget to do it, but you know, like putting something in the real world actually is super powerful. There's like a Gundam robot in a mall in, in Tokyo. Uh, if you have a game that's doing well, why not make the physical version of it, right? Like if you have enough audience and fans, like you might actually make like a kind of like companion uh, physical version of it. Uh, if you have a game which is all about singing and dancing, why don't you hire your voice actresses, train them, and make them to do public shows in uh, Japan, like and sell tickets? That happens. Uh, all right, so just to like a uh, little bit of warning. So I guess like the, the one of the goals I kind of had for this is like to understand that Japan is a at heart is like a niche because they're so unique but they're like a massive niche, so it's worth catering to them, right? So we can actually learn a lot of ways how to cater to niches, like by paying attention to what they're doing. Uh, but like, you gotta be careful that you know, the more you focus on that specific niche, the more you run the risk of like, like uh, ignoring everybody else. So you gotta be careful like, if you're, like, with the, the way you're doing things. So thank you. <laughs> well, let's move to the... Q&A part. Yeah, so we have some time for Q&A. I think the um, the first question that comes to my mind, uh, we sort of discussed beforehand, is especially if you're a, a, an indie developer, an indie game studio, like what would you what would you say the biggest takeaway is? A lot of that stuff that you that you talked about is kind of crazy, especially if you're based here. Right. Like, what would you bite off first? Yeah, if I was a small indie, I would basically do the giant robot first. No. I'm <laughs> I think that probably the most useful things there is like, you know, the trying to put your ideas somewhere where people can get access to them and test. So like that idea of like an IP lab, I think there's something that any, anybody can do. Like if you're trying to come up with like some characters or something, you can try that out. Uh, yeah, a lot of the other ideas require a little bit more money, but that's probably like the easiest to kind of try and implement. Sweet. Great. <laughs> Thank you. All right, guys. Thanks.